Um, I think we should get started. We only have uh, our hour-long time frame. Um, I want to thank everyone for, for joining uh, this webinar. This is an introduction to the Day School Video Academy, um, which is a project of the Avi Chai Foundation in partnership with C3 Communications. We um, are going to walk through what this program is all about, um, give you some background, and, and uh, so that you understand what the components are. Um, also, this webinar is being recorded. And uh, the, the webinar will be available, uh, we'll make it available afterwards um, at a link that we can send you so that it can be shared uh, with others in your school communities. Um, so I'd like to begin um, with uh, um, inviting uh, Leah Mayer from the Avichai Foundation to, um, to say a couple words about um, this project and the program. Hi, everybody. I am really, really thrilled to welcome you to all. I wish I could uh, see all of you in person, uh, but uh, we'll have, this will have to suffice. Uh, Avichai, uh, as uh, you probably know, has, uh, has worked uh, uh, on behalf of Jewish day schools and Jewish summer camps for a long time. And uh, we are now uh, increasingly focused on how to help uh, the Jewish day schools and the camps to use 21st century tools uh, in order to um, move forward into the 21st century. That's uh, for the purposes of uh, enhancing the quality of education in your schools and also uh, for the purposes of making the schools as affordable as possible for, uh, for the students and their families. Uh, so uh, toward that end, we've conducted a number of what we call experiments to see um, to see what works well and what helps the schools. Uh, one of one experiment that we did on a small scale was something called the Social Media Academy, with ten schools in the New York area to help them uh, try to use social media to create community. Uh, and this video academy is open to many, many more schools. It's really for schools all over North America. Uh, and we want to uh, help schools through uh, the expert work of C3 uh, to use video uh, both to strengthen their school communities, to reach out to uh, alumni and parents to showcase uh, what Jewish day schools do. Uh, and uh, to make this a part of your toolkit for the future, to give you that capacity to, uh, to use video in, in many different ways, uh, not only for fundraising, but also for, uh, for building your school community. Uh, and uh, we hope that you will gain uh, from this. As, you, as Michael will tell you, uh, it's being offered uh, free of charge, and uh, he will describe to you what this is all about. Thank you so much. Um, so let me just give you a little bit of background about um, me and, and C3 Communications. Um, we're a communications consulting firm uh, that's based in Chicago. Um, we work around the country and internationally helping nonprofits, nonprofits and educational institutions use the web effectively to advance their mission. Um, and uh, I, I'm also a, a day school parent, and um, and uh, we are working with Avichai to to uh, help increase the capacity of day schools to utilize these really critical web tools. So I want to, with that introduction, um, uh, I want to uh, launch into here what this whole what this whole thing is about. Um, the Day School Video Academy goal is so that Jewish day schools will use online video for recruitment, retention, and fundraising. Um, I'm, I'm just hearing an echo here. I'm hearing an echo here. Hold on. OK. Um, so. Uh, 
yes, I'm sorry. Um, can you hear me now? I'm muted. Yes. Okay. Um, okay. Uh, so, so I am. I'm I getting am. this. Okay. So the, the Day School Video Academy's goal is to build the capacity of Jewish day schools um, to use online video for recruitment, retention, and fundraising, and really building community. And the, the effort here is not about uh, providing the school with a professional video producer to go out and do the work for you. The idea is that we need, as a community, to have capacity in-house to be telling our story effectively online video is really core to that and we'll talk more about that later so the goal is that the school and the school community after this effort will be able um, much better able to um, to um, uh, for themselves to go out and create the kinds of video that are going to make a difference um, for for their institution The, the, this program is eligible to all North American day schools um, that are operating this coming school year. So that's the, that's the, the main criteria. Um, it is not a program for preschools. They're not eligible. Um, all um, programs and institutions must express a positive attitude toward the state of Israel. Uh, and um, uh, this is uh, only for schools that value secular education um, as well. So these are the, the criteria. Also, everything that's on these slides will be available to you afterwards, so you, you don't have to worry about uh, writing, writing all this down. Uh, so we'll give you a link where you can see all, all of this information. Um, and if you have any questions about eligibility or other issues that we're going to go over today, then uh, you can, um, you can um, uh, email us. Uh, and we will answer those questions if we don't get to them today. So who's this for? It's really for the whole school community and everyone in your community who's interested in helping make uh, videos that will tell the, the school's story and strengthen the school's efforts around recruitment, retention, and fundraising. So that includes administrators, so the folks who, who are working for the school, um, and, and those could be people who are doing um, recruitment. Those could be development people uh, for the school who are responsible for fundraising or other staff. Um, teachers, there, there are teachers who have a particular interest in, in, in this and in video. We encourage them to get involved. Um, the wider school community of parents and, and even grandparents, um, we, I know from my school experience that, that there are parents who are really good at, at using that video camera. Um, because you see them at all of the school events with it. Uh, and I think getting those, those folks involved in this um, is a way that the school can give something to those parents in terms of learning um, and get back something in terms of the, the efforts that will happen on the, school, on the school's behalf. Um, this is also open to students, so, this, so it could be open to students in a, in a casual way. The students can do, do their own thing uh, as part of this effort within your school. Or it could be part of uh, an organized thing that your school does, whether that's uh, through a particular class or, or an initiative um, that's announced to the students. So, so students are, are encouraged to be involved as much as, as they would want or as much as you feel, um, as the administration would feel that it would be appropriate. Um, and then alumni is another group that, um, that we feel is not enough involved in the school. And this can be a way for interested alumni to, to uh, also be involved, give back, and get something really valuable in return in terms of the, the learning that, that's going to go through this, this effort. Um, so there are four uh, main, uh, there, are, there are several elements to the program. Uh, uh, a main element are four webinars that are going to happen in September and the beginning of October. Um, these are webinars similar in format to what we're doing right now. Um, three of them will be one hour and one of them will be 90 minutes long. And I'm going to go through what we're going to cover in those, in those learning webinars. The first uh, webinar, which will be September 13th, um, and all of the webinars will be at this time as well. Um, and all of them 
will be recorded so that they'll be available for those who were not able to make the webinar um, uh, at the time that it was presented. Uh, and I believe um, you will see in your chat window a registration link for this first webinar so that you can um, you will be able to, to take that and 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 register and we'll also send out that registration link. So the first webinar on September 13th is, is uh, an one hour long and it's about storytelling. And this is really an overview of, of storytelling techniques as well as the kind of thinking that you need to do in preparation for making successful video. So that includes what kinds of questions and, and stories you're going to choose as well as the, the pre-production things that you need to know so that you're prepared when you, when you pick up your video camera. And what we know from our experiences, a little bit of thinking, a little bit of planning goes a long way to making sure that that video that you actually make is successful. So it's not just about picking up a camera. It's really about what are we going to tell, what stories are we going to tell, and how are we going to do it. Um, and, and this is the overview, really, about how you get to that. So that will be the first uh, of, the four, of the four webinars. Um, on September 20th, and as you'll see if you look at your calendar, these are all consecutive Tuesdays starting September 13th. Um, the second webinar will be Production Basics. And so this is really what, what to do uh, when you pick up your camera. And so we know that with, uh, with a little bit of training, and this has been our experience in, in doing a lot of, of video training, that um, by avoiding some common mistakes, by understanding a few core um, issues and principles, you can take uh, the, the video that you would, you would have done and turn it into video that could be much more successful uh, for your school. And so that's what this webinar is going to go, go over. So uh, an example here in the description is about sound. You know, we know people will watch uh, video with, with um, bad quality video and good sound, but they won't watch good quality video with bad sound. So getting, getting good sound and principles of good sound is something that we're going to cover. Here, it's often something that, that people forget about when they're picking up their camera and, and going out to shoot. So we're going to look at that as well as other techniques that are, that are important in terms of composition, uh, interviewing techniques, and a really important one, which is how to use B-roll. B-roll, for those of you who don't know, is, is um, video images that don't have uh, sound associated with them that you'll use inside a video. So for example, if you have an interview with uh, um, an alum that you're that's essentially narrating your story, you don't necessarily want to show that person the whole time that you're, that, that you're watching that video. You want to keep their narration going and their voice going, but you want to show other shots um, while they're speaking. And those other shots are what we call B-roll. And so incorporating B-roll is one of those um, critical elements that are often overlooked that can make the difference between a video that, that um, is less interesting to watch and one that will engage the audience that you want. So that's the second webinar. The third one on the next Tuesday, the 27th of September, um, this one is 90 minutes long uh, and it is um, about post-production. Post-production is the, the um, Post-production is what do you do with that video after you uh, have shot it? And this is really a critical. Um, this is really a critical um, uh, part of the 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 process. And we know as video producers that that often um, the real stories and the real magic happens in the editing suite and not in the in the shooting. Um, and the reason that this webinar is 90 minutes long and not one hour is that the learning curve for post-production is much is steeper than, than that of, of, of video shooting. And so we're going to focus on, on um, a product called Adobe Premiere Elements, which is an is a editing program that's available on both Mac and PC. But this webinar will really cover broad techniques that can be used for any software that you use. So if you happen to already be using iMovie or Windows Media Maker or any other program, um, you can, uh, this webinar will still be useful to you. 
but for those of you who who do not yet have a program to use, we're gonna we're gonna talk uh, about and show Adobe Premiere Elements because we think it's a great solution for for those on both Macs and and PC. So that's the, the third webinar, again, the consecutive Tuesdays. And then the last webinar is that next Tuesday, October 4th. Um, it's one hour long, and the focus is on distribution. So it's great that you make a video, but um, the video is not very useful to you if nobody sees it. And the question then is, well, what do we do with it once we have it? And so this webinar will cover the principles of distribution. Um, online, how do you maximize the audience for your video, how do you use it to promote engagement, how does it fit into an overall video strategy that your, that your school will have. Um, and so we'll look at best practices, we'll look at how to leverage your existing networks, we'll look at social media, YouTube, and, and sites like that, and, um, and this should be a very productive uh, webinar. This webinar will also be useful really for all kinds of, of content that you produce. So, so uh, all the, what's true of video is true for other content as well, that you want to um, get it out in front of the audience that, that um, will be meaningful to your, to your institution, um, and you need techniques to do that. So, so this will be helpful. So the four learning webinars are core um, beginning part of this program. And again, I just want to reiterate something Leah said at the beginning. Um, this, is, this, this, whole, uh, this whole project and this whole opportunity are, are being um, provided to the schools free of charge. So there is no, no um, charge for any of this uh, materials um, and efforts. And more than one person from your school community is invited to participate. So that list of administrators and uh, teachers, um, students, parents, grandparents, alumni. Um, so whatever part of your school community that you believe will actively participate here um, uh, and, and we're really encouraging um, people to, to think of this as a complete effort. So the idea is not just to do the learning webinars, but actually to end up producing video. Um, and so anyone in your school community is committed to, to producing those videos um, is welcome to participate in the, in the learning webinars. So in addition to what we're going to do on those webinars, there is a website under development now um, that will be the home for a variety of online resources to help you uh, as well learn more about producing online video. And um, uh, so that will be launched in early September before the first webinar. And there'll be a whole set of uh, resources available there, including recorded versions of this and the, and the learning webinars. That's also where, where they'll be posted. So some of the things that will be on this site will be downloadable documents that will help you walk through each phase of video production when you're actually doing it. So for example, in pre-production, um, there'll be a, um, uh, a download about outlining your story, something called a shot list, which is deciding what things you need to shoot to tell that story, questions for interviews, for example. Um, we'll have production information, including recommendations for hardware and software if, if you need those things, um, a set of best practices, checklists for production. And these are things that we use as professionals um, in video, and it'll, th those will be adapted to, to, your, uh, to the level of, of in-house um, capabilities. Um, release form templates, so that's another issue that um, is important is making sure that everybody who's on a video has you have permission for them to be in the video. Um, uh, we had a question on our last webinar about uh, students and and the issue of permissions. Um, many schools have blanket um, uh, releases built into their registration documents, which allow for images of students to appear in marketing materials. Um, um, many of those that that I have seen cover anything that you would be doing here. Um, and obviously protecting the, the actual identity and, and, and location of individual students. But um, uh, you know, those are things that, you're, that we can talk more about um, and, and you, um, you'll have to look at on an individual school basis. But um, again, we'll provide uh, templates for release forms for those of you who don't have it. And then in the post-production bracket, we'll have things like um, uh, log sheets, which are how do you keep your 
the video that you shoot, how do you know what you have so that you can then edit it later? Um, other kinds of uh, information that will help you uh, uh, take the, the video that you shoot and turn it into a finished product, um, including things like a paper edit script. So that's a paper edit, for example, is, is something where you take the transcripts of a video and you um, first lay out the flow that you want on paper so that when you actually go into your editing program, you know which pieces you want to cut um, uh, and paste. And that can actually save a tremendous amount of time. So we're going we're gonna to go through all of those things in the webinars, and then we're going to provide you with, with a, um, a, a great and focused set of documentation to help you actually implement. Um, so I want to, um, uh, there's a few questions I just want to pause and, and uh, answer. So one question is, do, do you have to purchase the editing software? If you have editing software available um, to you, you don't have to purchase anything. There is, um, if you have a Mac, you get iMovie for free. Um, on PCs, there's Windows Media Maker, which is not great, but can work. So you're, you're not required to purchase anything. Um, if you need to purchase something, we do recommend Adobe Premiere Elements if you're on a PC in particular, um, uh, because if you're on a Mac, you, you probably already have iMovie. Um, and, uh, but you do not need to, to purchase it. There are discounted um, licenses for that, for that software available. And the, I think the retail of that software is $99. So it's not um, a, a very expensive piece of of software. Um, so that's one question. Another question is, is there a charge? I want to just repeat this because we get, we're get we getting this question a lot because I think people are uh, in the school communities are realizing that this is a, a very valuable um, a, a very valuable effort that the Abichai Foundation is, is undertaking and it is free of charge. So there is no charge to the schools to participate in um, any of the things that we're talking about today. So. Um, that's uh, a message that you can share with your schools and share with your school community. Um, uh, I think it's a, a tremendous gift to the schools, and um, and I think the schools, you know, the the goal of your school should be really maximum participation in this and get the most out of it um, while it's available. Um, so, a question was, can uh, someone be on one of the webinars and not on the other because that's the person just working on one of those issues. So if somebody's just working on distribution in your in your school and you have other people doing the actual production, can that person just join the fourth webinar? Absolutely yes. Um, so we, we, we encourage you to have folks um, be part of the whole process. Uh, and we do think even people who are on, who are working in uh, PR would benefit from learning the other parts of the process, because um, they could be involved in deciding what potentially is in, in those videos, which would help them uh, with PR. But we do know that, uh, that there's different folks with different specialties in the school community, and there's different feelings of, of, of um, ability. So we, we know that there are folks in schools who are doing very successful videos today uh, al already. And, um, but we do feel like uh, that um, as much as you can participate in the better, but if there's a need for certain people to join certain aspects of the program and the webinars, um, that's okay. So I'm going to move on here. Uh, there's another thing that we have that's set up already. This is the, the um, Facebook group. And so there's a Facebook group. This is not required, but it's available um, for those of you on Facebook. This is a group where the uh, the idea is that all, that as many as we can, folks who are participating in this effort can have a place where we can share information, but also where you can um, talk to each other about the things that you're doing, swap ideas, um, uh, thoughts, um, and support each other through this process. So we're gonna have there's gonna be a lot of conversation on that Facebook group. We're gonna post. Um, additional resources, um, and anything that's really interesting that's happening on that Facebook group, we're also going to put on the on the microsite. So if you're not on Facebook and you can't access that group, then you will still get the the highlights uh, of what goes on there. But I think if you're if you're the leader of this effort in your school, um, and you and you are on Facebook, I would uh, highly recommend being part of the group 
uh, here because I think it would also just be a rewarding and enriching experience to collaborate with colleagues across the, the world of Jewish day schools that you probably don't get that much opportunity um, to, to interact with. Um, so, I, so I think that's a, a bonus of this, of this program. Um, so, so that's another piece. And then um, another really critical and, and useful piece is that there's going to be one-on-one -on -one consultation available with each school uh, with professionals here at C3 Communications. So we're going to, um, as, uh, after the learning webinars are done and we're getting into actual production of, of videos, um, our professional producers, editors, and others will be available for phone consultation with um, schools. There's going to be a limited amount of this available. And we'll, we'll, we'll tell you more details of, of that and how to access that once we get to the webinar phase. Um, but the goal here is that when you're actually doing that video, um, you have someone that you can talk to who can review some of the, the ideas, the, 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 the rough cut, uh, the, the concepts get stuck uh, technically with something. Um, you, you have a question of direction. You have somebody. Um, that is very experienced that you're, you'll be able to access and talk to. So again, this is a, a really valuable um, part of this of this effort, um, and this is all available to you um, at no charge. Um, and then the the final part of this of this effort is the video contest. Um, and so the the idea around the video contest is to um, encourage you to actually use the skills that you're learning. So we're going to help you um, really understand why this, why, why video is, is so critical, get you uh, working on it, um, make sure you have the things that you need uh, and, and the learning that you need, but we also want you to put that to use and, and start making video. And so we're going to have a video contest that um, will we'll start after the learning webinars. Um, and details of that contest are, will, will come will come uh, soon, and um, uh, we will um, uh, list some of the things that are going to happen around that contest on the website, but it's an opportunity really for, for, for you to, to um, put your skills to use and to give you some framework in which to do that, as well as a, a really great opportunity for the, school, for the different school communities to share their work with each other and really um, help you think about all the great things that you can do um, and learn from all the different schools that are going to be participating in this. So there, there's really a great um, community aspect to this program that I think will be very enriching for you as professionals um, and for the schools themselves. So this is the this is the um, this is the outline of, of what's involved, and I want to um, spend the next part uh, of of this uh, talking to you a little bit about video in general and what's happening online so you have some context for why why we're doing this. Um, but I'm, I just want to pause for a second uh, to see if we have questions. Um, there's a question about the URL for the website. Um, it's under development, so we don't have that uh, available yet. So um, I, I want to say, and everybody who's registered here will get an email um, with those details, so we will uh, we will get you that the the website address. I would also say you can join the Facebook group, um, which you should have the URL for. Um, and the and if you don't, we'll we'll make sure it's pasted into the chat window there. Um, and you uh, everybody on the Facebook group will be informed. And certainly, if you've registered for this webinar, you will receive an email with that information and any other information. There's a question about the is there a limit on the number of schools that can participate. Um, there are certain there will be certain limits built into things like the consulting, but there is no limit on the number of schools that can participate. We would like the goal of this is is to raise the the overall level of Jewish day schools ability to tell their story using video um, and to and and through extension that helping them recruit and fundraise and strengthen the school communities, and we want every school to take advantage of that. So, so really our goal is that every school takes advantage of that. There is no 
uh, nobody will be excluded from that. So we really would encourage you to um, take this information back to your the rest of your administration and um, and let everybody know um, what an opportunity this is. So I want to, um, uh, and if you still have questions about any of this, you can again post them in the chat window, and we will we will respond to those. Um, uh, there's a question about um, entering videos in the contest that um, were made previously, um, and the answer is that's not the idea. So the idea here is to um, take newfound skills and to do new things. Um, and the contest will also be about videos that you create yourself. So this is not a con. This is not like um, I know Page had a had a contest, uh, a day school video contest, um, and, and that. Um, uh, and, and the difference here really is that this contest is is um, all about the the internal skills that you have uh, that you've that you've uh, that have gotten better because of the efforts that we're doing. So we're going to be really looking for new material. Um, and I, I'll talk a little bit about this in a minute, but we're, we're in a world where this is not about one video anymore. Uh, the goal here is not to create one great video that tells everything about your school. The goal here is to change the culture of your communications so that you're telling lots of stories about the wonderful things that are happening in your school community. Um, and, and I'm going to explain now why that's really important. So, so that's our goal, and we're going to. And in the contest rules, those things are going to be um, re re reflected. So, um, uh, the question about qualifying. If you have a question about qualifying, um, you should send send me an email about that, and we'll we'll get back to you uh, uh, with that. So we had we had a qualify the issue around who qualifies is in one of the slides here. And um, uh, uh, and if you're not sure based on those criteria, then then send us a note, and we'll we'll get back to you about that. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what's happening online uh, and and video um, in general. And this is to give you guys some context uh, about this whole initiative, and again to bring back to your school communities some more information about why this is so critical and and why you should be you should be doing it. So um, you probably recognize this picture. This is a picture of uh, if you if if you don't, uh, um, I, I'd be surprised. But this is from last year, about this time, I think, um, when the Chilean miners were rescued from from their uh, from their mine when they got trapped. Um, and the reason I'm showing this to you is that there's some lessons for your school in this story and in this picture um, that I want you to think about. And so one of those uh, lessons is that, that um, we now expect to see things that are happening in the world. So think about this is a, a story of a mine in Chile, not in a big city, in the middle of nowhere, and, and with, with a lot of the story happening underground, far underground, and we're watching that happening and unfolding uh, on television, on our computers, um, all over. And we don't blink that we're watching this unfold. And we're not only watching it unfold above ground, but we're watching it underground. So think about that. These miners are trapped. Um, they can't get out, but we can see them. Because the first thing they did was drill a hole and thread a camera through it uh, so we could actually watch these miners underground. So. Um, user expectations have changed, viewer expectations have changed, people's expectations have changed, and now they expect to see things that are happening in the world. And if they expect to see this mine incident or the earthquake in Japan, so much more so do they expect to see what's happening in their backyard, in their school community. Um, and that goes, that's true for the, the community members that you have today. It's true for the alumni. And it's true certainly for the prospective families um, that you have an opportunity to reach out to. And so we're in a world where people want to see things. Um, the, other, the other lesson from this story is that the story trumps the production. So we saw pictures underground, and they were very grainy. And when they were rescuing these miners, we saw this big pulley thing pulling up this, uh, this cage, this blue cage that you see. And that story was unfolding on, 
on um, uh, you know wherever you were watching it, and 15 minutes at a time, all you could see was that that thing spinning. Uh, but we were riveted to it anyway, even though the visuals weren't so good. And so that's another lesson that I want you to take away from this: that there are great stories um, around, and the story is more important than 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 the production. So you shouldn't feel like everything you have to produce has to be done like it was Steven Spielberg doing it. That's not true. You have to do things that are engaging and compelling, um, and you have those things in your community. These Chilean miners, um, if, I, if, if I told you there was a miner who was an interesting character, it would be, you, wouldn't, you wouldn't really believe it. But after this incident, it turned out that some of the people who were trapped in that mine were very interesting characters. And so that's another lesson is that there are interesting characters everywhere. And there are many interesting characters in your school community. So introduce us to those people. And this is another way to do that. Um, so let's talk about video specifically for a second. So I'm going to change the slide here. And you can see um, people are watching video online. And not just a few people, most people, and not just most people, 85% of folks um, are watching online video. Um, and so. Um, that, you know, it's almost 100 million people watching video on an average day. Um, and we're gonna, I'm going to show you some YouTube statistics, but it's not about young people anymore. Um, there's as many people wa over 55 watching video on YouTube as there are under 18. And so we're really in a world now where um, this is as ubiquitous as, as um, almost as television, that it's not something that's about you know, the habits of, of the young or the early adopters. It's something that's very well um, uh, used by many folks um, all over. Um, Cisco is the company that powers much of the web's infrastructure. And they estimate that 90% of all the web's data will be video within four years. So think about that. All of all the data on the internet, um, Cisco estimates that 90% of it will be video in four years. So we are, we are um, really in a world where people are watching more and reading less. And you can say that that's a bad thing, uh, but it's a, it's, a, it's a real thing. And so we have to live in the world that, that exists. And that's a world where people want to see things. And so when you think about telling your story, when you think about talking to your community, when you think about your website even, um, you have to think that this is the world you're in. And so how does that change? And we really believe it's a, it's a paradigm shift. And so this is, this is the context um, that Abichai is, is walking into to help day schools uh, move into this world and take advantage of the opportunities that this new world brings in terms of, of storytelling. So I want to talk about um, a little more about, about this and the scale of this. Um, so these are the, the, some older YouTube numbers on the left that show the breakdown of age groups. And again, this is where you can see there's as many folks over 55 as um, under 18. Sorry for the fire engine outside. Um, but the scale of this is just incredible. So every minute now, 48 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube. Think about that. That's just uh, two days worth of uh, of uh, video are uploaded to YouTube every minute, which is twice as much as last year. So that's so it's not just that it's big because it was big last year, and and in fact, in my last webinar, I didn't have these numbers updated, and it said 24 hours of video are uploaded to YouTube every minute, which is also a crazy number, but it's accelerating. And so again, if you think that this is a fad, uh, you're wrong. This is actually something that that is uh, we're only in the beginnings of, and it's accelerating. So YouTube just reached the 3 billion views per day number, which is, again, 50% more than last year. So we're really just seeing incredible growth. Um, and overall, the average uh, person uh, in the US is spending 16 hours a month watching online video. So what's amazing about that is that that's a number that's more like a television number than a web number. For, for those of you who are involved in your website, and look at things like Google Analytics, you know that people will probably spend one minute, two minutes, three minutes, and if you're lucky, four minutes um, on your website because uh, people have short attention spans. But what they're doing more than anything else is watching video online. And again, that is something that we need to respond to as a community, um, and that's the goal of, 
of this effort. So regardless of, of uh, for the most part, when we talk about a community of prospective families, a school community, existing school community, alumni, um, uh, uh, do donors, um, that audience is watching online video. Um, and so we need to be there. There's another reason that video is, is, is critical, and it has to do with, with um, search and search engines. So there's two important things to, to uh, remember about this. One is that Google is now building in video results into the first page of search results. And we know that people don't go past the first page of search results um, very often. And so around the third result for, men, for most terms, I think it's over half of the, the search terms now, um, YouTube is delivering video results um, as well. And so when you, when you think about uh, search is still a critical way that people discover content online. And when you think about that, that video uh, is there, is, are you there? So when somebody searches for your school or, or, or Jewish education or day schools or other kinds of terms in your area, are they finding you? What video are they seeing? Um, and so if you want to get into those first pages of, of search results, video is an important way to do that. The second thing about search that's important is that the second largest search engine on the web is not Bing and it's not Yahoo, it's YouTube. And of course, YouTube's owned by Google, um, but more people are going to YouTube to start their searching and search on YouTube than they are any of those other search engines. And so if you're not, if you're not coming up there, um, you're also missing out on an important opportunity um, and, and on the negative side, potentially having things that are, that are not um, uh, in line with your mission and goals showing up for those searches where you should be there. And so, so if um, you know, search is another reason that you should be telling your school community that you need to be participating in this effort and, and, and making videos. So I want to just talk a little bit about uh, uh, donor demographics because you know there, a lot of research has been done around you know who are the people who are who are giving to to nonprofit institutions and um, there was a there was a study done by Convio which is a, a big um, software company that provides online software for nonprofits for for email and donation processing. Um, and a couple other companies, and they did a survey called the Wired Wealthy um, about looking at major donors, middle and major donors, which in, in many ways is more analogous to the, to the fundraising opportunities that, that uh, day schools have than the kind of wide, uh, small donors that large nonprofits have. And so one of the things that really stood out for me in this, in this uh, survey was that when they asked about things like Facebook and other social networks, um, it was really the YouTube number that, that uh, dwarfed those other numbers. And so when we really, when we're thinking about our donor, potential donor community, again, the video piece becomes really critical. And so this, this world of, of video is really changing everything about how we communicate. Um, and one of those things that it should be changing is your website. Your website has to um, uh, turn into an interactive channel um, and not simply an online brochure. And that's something that's probably a, a easier or, or harder depending on uh, what, you know, what school you are and the resources that you have available. Um, but you can, with, with a lot of free tools like YouTube, um, you can uh, make video, embed video, share video, and use your variety of channels, your social media channels, your website channel, your email, and other things to drive your community to the content that you're creating. So we're in this new world, and you have to be able to have the in-house capacity to support that. Um, I'm going to um, uh, finish up here, and then we'll, we can have a little bit of time for questions. Um, just talking about where this fits. You know, the online video is part of a larger idea that, that we call inbound marketing. And inbound marketing is made up of these three circles. Um, one is the content you produce, so like videos, but it's other things. It's blog posts, it's ebooks, it's it's web pages, it's 
it's all of that. Another part is SEO, which means search engine optimization. So it's, it's how are we showing up in the search engines, because that's how people are finding us. Um, and, and, and another piece of that is social media. And the idea behind inbound marketing is that um, the world that we used to live in is, was one where every, all marketing was outbound marketing. And that means that we were, uh, or uh, the marketer Seth Godin calls it interruption marketing. So marketing was all about interrupting people from doing something that they like to do, like watching a television show or reading a magazine, and putting some kind of advertisement in front of them so, and interrupting them. And the world that we're in today, particularly around the kinds of complex decision making, like where your kids go to school, um, is much more likely in inbound marketing in the sense that um, when somebody's interested in it or, or they're getting information from their friends, um, that's where they're going to come across this stuff. And so having quality content that attracts those people. So, you know, imagine having um, a great uh, video about your third grade science class, for example, um, uh, uh, and, and having that video shared by a member of your community on Facebook, which um, is part of, is not necessarily something that leads directly to a donation or directly to a to a uh, new new family to enroll in the school, but it's part of the landscape that leads to those decisions, right? It creates um, a feeling and a community around your school, and it creates um, a sense of what your school's about that overall then leads to those things that, that you want. Um, and so we, you have to be thinking about that, that inbound marketing um, as you think about how your school's going to go about its recruitment and development. So um, just to, to conclude my prepared remarks here, um, this, this effort is not about budget. So it's not that we're too big or too small or um, it's, it's really not about money. And it's not about being technically savvy. So we don't know how to, how to do this. We, we, we've never worked on the computer with, uh, with video editing. It's not about that. This is really about getting your hands dirty and just doing it. Um, so trying it, getting better, learning. Um, and being part of this larger school community that, that is going to come together through this effort to really upgrade the skills of everyone so that we're telling our stories. Um, and I think you know, our goal here is also that in the aggregate, uh, in, in the individual school, this will help you. This will help you because you'll be telling your story better and it will help you achieve those goals that you want. But all together, it also helps the world of day school education. Um, because as we're all telling our individual stories, we're also telling a bigger story about day school education and the value that we put on it. Um, and so we see that this this in that context as well. So I, I want to just close with a really positive um, uh, you know feeling here that you can do this and that we would really encourage you to to um, get excited about it and get other folks within your school community to be excited about it. So I'm going to um, a um, answer some of the questions that we have um, in the remaining time. And if I don't get to your question in our remaining time, then um, you can email us. Um, and you got an email from me, I think, as confirmation for this webinar. Um, and so uh, you can um, uh, send me a note, and we will make sure that we answer your question. So, um, uh, so a well, question is to address the overlap of this topic with the use of video um, in the curriculum. Um, uh, so somebody says it seems like there's a lot of synergy between this and the, and the idea of using video in the, in the curriculum. Um, I, I think there is. I think there's a lot of really interesting things happening around instruction and, and online video. And it's, and it's certainly related in the, in the big scheme of things to pe what people are doing. If you're not familiar with the Khan Academy, you should look that up um, and watch watch the TED Talk and, and see see what's online about that. Um, but this isn't really about that. So so our our goal here here is really the um, outward facing goal around um, recruitment, retention, and fundraising. Um, but I think that through this effort, you can learn a lot about what your capabilities are, and that can open doors that that around things like. Um, curriculum and instruction that you might want to want to approach. Um, there's a question about the prizes for the contest. 
Um, those are again things that are under development. I, I will say that that um, you know the prizes will be something that you will really like. So um, we will we will give an announcement more on that later. Um, and again, I, I would highly recommend that you join the Facebook group. Um, uh, you know, as one way to hear about that. But we will certainly be emailing everyone with all of these details. So the prize the prizes are are great prizes, um, and will be something that will also get your community excited. Um, so I think those, if you have other questions, um, you can post them them here. Um, uh, the TED talk that I recommended, I'm going to, I'm going to, um, is from the, what's called the, the Khan Academy. Uh, and if you go to TED.com um, and you search for Khan, I think it's K-H-A-N, is that right? Um, uh, I can, I can, um, I can find the actual link for you right now and um, paste it in here. Um, I'm going to paste this link right into the the. Uh, what, where did I go? Okay, so here you go. Here's the actual link to the thing that I'm talking about, and this is. This is um, uh, really one of the one of the um, uh, talks that is getting a lot of buzz in the ed in education circles because it's about using video to take a lot of the downtime out of the classroom um, and make classroom instruction much more effective. So, um, so I would certainly recommend that you that you watch that. Um, okay, so I think we're we're. Um, we're at the conclusion of our our remarks here. Um, Leah, do you have anything that you want to add? No, I think that you've said it well. And I would just ask uh, everyone to make sure that you sign up for the Facebook group and be on the lookout for more information about the contest because there will be uh, the prizes. The biggest prize will be what your school will get from it. But uh, in terms of your own skills and uh, and ongoing capacity, uh, but there will be in addition prizes that um, are very worthwhile uh, for the schools. Terrific. Okay, I want to again thank you all for taking time. I know uh, it gets very busy around this time of year as you're preparing for for school starting, um, and so we really appreciate. Um, the enthusiasm that we've seen so far. And again, please take this information back to your school communities, share it with a, with a broader audience and, and, and get everyone excited. We're gonna, I'm gonna send, uh, make sure everyone has a, also a link to this, to this webinar. So if anybody wants to, who wasn't here today in your community or that you know, you wanna share the, the link to these slides or, uh, and, and to the webinar with, with audio, uh, we will provide that as well. So again, thank you very much. And so we're going to conclude uh, this webinar. So um, everyone have a great day.